Hey guys, it's Maddie. Today we are back with another decade of our brand new 100 Years of Trucking series. This time we are taking you guys on a trip back through time in our very own truck time machine, starting all the way back in the year 1940. Let's dive right in. If you'll recall from our previous Trucking in the 30s video, we left off in the year 1939, right at the beginning of one of the most violent and deadly battles the world has ever experienced. By the time the new decade in the year 1940 rolled around, the world was already knee-deep in the beginning stages of the biggest bloodbath ever known, World War II. 1940 also marked the beginning of President Roosevelt's third term as he prepared to continue to lead the nation through the difficult waters that were soon to come. The onset of the Second World War changed the face of the American landscape as the majority of the nation's production efforts shifted towards making military materials. Many truck manufacturers around at the time had slowly started seizing standard production and began building heavier duty trucks to support the Allied forces. Additionally, the increased demand for heavy-duty wartime supplies opened the door for even more manufacturers to manifest their way into the industry during this time. In fact, despite the release of their leading Series L trucks in 1940, Mack trucks temporarily stopped their production and notably supplied over 35,000 heavy-duty tactical trucks for the United States military throughout the duration of the war totaling over $3 million worth of vehicles by the time it was all said and done. As one of the major military contractors in the trucking industry, Mack Trucks ranked 63rd among all U.S. corporations in production value for the war. In 1941, Peterbilt Motors Company unveiled their cult classic, Couple, with their Model 270 truck in both conventional and cab over engine variants. It was this Model 270 cab over truck that earned Peterbilt their beloved Bubble Nose by name. Also this same year, Peterbilt proudly released their Model 364 truck built specifically for military use by U.S. Navy contractors. These new Peterbilt Model 364 trucks, as well as many other military built vehicles at the time, would serve the Navy and the rest of the U.S. military well especially with the surprise attack on Pearl Harbor that would take place just before 8 a.m. on December 7th later on in the year. The devastating aerial attack inflicted on the then-neutral United States by Imperial Japan at the time would mark a pivotal point in the war as the climax of worsening relations between Axis and Allied powers and the official entry of United States into World War II. The next year in 1942, founder and CEO of Freightways Manufacturing, Leland James, changed the company's name to Freightliner. With this name change came the launch of the new Freightliner brand with the release of the industry's first commercial vehicle with an all-aluminum cab, the Model 600 Shovel Nose Truck. Unfortunately, despite the newfound success of their fresh-faced Freightliner branding and the release of their first Shovel Nose model truck, the company was soon forced to suspend standard production in order to aid the nation's war efforts. Fast forward two years later to December 20th, when the Federal Aid Highway Act of 1944 was enacted by the United States Congress and signed into law by FDR. This legislation not only called for the creation of a national system of interstate highways, but also required the Public Roads Administration to institute construction and operational standards for the interstate highway system. All in all, the goals of this act were to implement over 40,000 miles of interstate highways and other secondary feeder roads in order to connect major cities and industrial areas, which would overall allow for far easier transport as well as provide improvements to the economy and national defense system. The next year of 1945 marked the midway point of the decade and also the end of the most devastating conflict in U.S. history. The Second World War had finally came to a close and everyone could finally breathe a sigh of relief as the universe began to realign and restructure itself once again. Despite all the guts and gore, 
The glory was ours, and the wisdom we gained as a nation from such a horrific happening would allow for further growth in the future. Want to learn more about wartime trucks? Stay tuned for our new Trucks of War video series coming soon. Many hard lessons were learned, and as society regained its grasp on reality, things began to change in the world post-war. Technology had only continued to improve during the war, as we fought to remain the top dogs both on and off the battlefield, and many new, highly advanced trucks had emerged as a result. Speaking of advancements in the trucking industry, Pacific Car and Foundry, better known by the company we know today as Packar, made the investment of a lifetime when they purchased the assets of Kenworth Truck Company later on in the year 1945. Meanwhile, across the globe, Volvo trucks of Sweden were still recovering from the war, which had stunted the company's growth and intentions of releasing their first diesel truck at the beginning of the decade. Nonetheless, Volvo persisted and continued to perfect their new diesel design, which they were finally able to debut with their round nose truck in 1946. Here in the States that same year in 1946, after a dry commercial production period during the war, Diamond T was back with their first full year of commercial production with five models. By the next year in 1947, Diamond T had ramped up production and extended their line to more than double the size, now with 14 models. 1948 started off with a big bang when the very first proposal of how the universe began, known as the Big Bang Theory, was ironically introduced on April 1st of that year. Later in 1948, Kenworth released the trucking industry's next Big Bang with the very first post-war cabover engine design featured on their new 500 series bullnose trucks. Also in 1948, despite traditionally only producing their light-duty trucks and cars, Ford Motors Company hit the heavy-duty truck scene running with the introduction of their new F-series heavy-duty F8 model. In 1949, Peterbilt released their next dynamic duo with the model 280 and 350 iron nose conventional and cab over engine trucks. Also this same year, International Harvester Company introduced a replacement for their popular wartime K and KB series trucks with their new L series range. These new L series trucks were the first internationals to sport the Raymond Lowy IH insignia that would be used for several years to come. Thank you all so much for watching this decade of our new series, 100 Years of Trucking, Trucking in the 40s. Before you leave, make sure you like the video, check out the other videos on our channel, and subscribe. We are growing rapidly and quickly approaching our next goal of 20k subscribers, so thank you all so much for your support for the show. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or anything else you'd like to talk to us about, please be sure to tune into our podcast, The Chrome Corner, Wednesdays at 12 p.m. noon EST, and join Dave and Maddie as they answer viewers' questions and discuss all things Chrome. If you'd like to stay up to date with the new projects we have coming, follow us at Jack's Chrome Show on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We still have our truck history shirts available on our website, jackschromeshow.com, so be sure to check them out. If you're in the mood for some Chrome, Drop by our online Chrome shop at jackschromeshop.com and save on your order by using the discount code YouTube. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next week. And remember, if your rig don't shine, you don't know Jack. Jack.